Uh, now it's time for our big guest of the week, Braden Gall is the owner of 440 Sports, and of course you hear him on ESPN Radio all the time. I feel like that guy, not only does he fill in for everybody like Feinbaum, he does his own show like 20 times a day, and he's here on this show. What's going on, Braden? I like big guests. Uh, my, my waistline agrees with that uh, <laughs> after, after the last couple of years. <laughs> I have to apologize because I texted you on Sunday, and I forgot, dude, this guy's so busy. He's probably at the Titans game recovering it right now. You were probably busy doing that. Yeah, yes. Uh, watching one of the most heinous football games I've seen all season. Uh, I was covering the Titans Colts game 19 to 10. No offensive touchdowns for the Tennessee Titans who win. But you know what? Uh, a W is a W in the NFL. It's not like college where it's a beauty contest. So, uh, no, it was fun. And uh, you didn't you never bother me, my man. Anytime, anytime. Well, we'll get into bad offenses in college football that I get to cover quite a bit <laughs> here in a moment. But let, let's talk a little Kentucky, uh, Tennessee. Do you give Kentucky a chance with Will Levis looking like he's healthy again and maybe Tennessee looking ahead to uh, Alabama? Excuse me, not to I, Alabama, so it, to, to Georgia? Yeah, Georgia coming up next weekend. I, It's hard. I, I, I do think that Mark Stoops is talented enough. The offense that, that Tennessee runs, the Baylor offense, is not you know this newfound secret that no one knows how to, how to uh, game plan against. You just need certain things. Uh, you need pretty good corners. You need good guys up front that, that can stop the run sort of on their own with four or five, maybe six guys in the box so that you can cover as much as possible. So it's not like rocket scientists schematically. So I think Stoops has got that figured out and he's got some nice pieces there. Uh, I just don't like tennis. You it's it's and, and, and on the show, uh, David Ubbin from The Athletic compared it to the pick and roll in basketball. Like, you know, that Stockton and Malone are what they're going to do. It doesn't mean you can stop Carl Malone from knocking down jumpers or executing or Steph Curry or whatever it is. And so everybody kind of knows what Tennessee's going to do. I, I think the bigger question is on the other side. I, I think that Kentucky will make it difficult for a period of time for Tennessee's offense, but largely they're going to get to their 35 points. So the question is, can Will Levis, you know, Barry and Brown's going to be a big factor. Tennessee's corners are, are terrible. So can you attack down the field? And, and hit Tennessee where they are weakest, which is in their secondary down the field. And so Alabama sort of couldn't do that. Um, LSU is sort of starting to do that, but couldn't do that. Uh, Pittsburgh certainly couldn't do that. Florida couldn't do that. I don't know. Kentucky's got the quarterback to do it. They may have the receiver. I don't know if they've got the offensive line to protect him. So long answer is I don't think so. And, and frankly, Kentucky, for all of its growth and progress, the three wins since 1984 against Tennessee came against three of the worst Tennessee teams. Um, that was Jeremy Pruitt got fired, Butch Jones got fired, and then the Doolander in 2011. So it, Kentucky does not normally win this game. So who, in your opinion, is the best team in college football so far? I, I think the answer is Georgia or Ohio State, um, depending on a couple of different things. Ohio State's defensive front and then – looking at Georgia's down the field ability. Like that's where Tennessee is actually uniquely qualified to attack Georgia because much like Alabama, they don't have the big, they don't have the George Pickens. They don't have the Jalen Waddles, the Devonte Smith, the guys that really truly can go down the field and challenge you vertically sort of the way Tennessee can with Hyatt and Tillman and all and, and McCoy. So I think Georgia has a little weakness there. Their ability to go down the field has been tested. Missouri did that, dared them to do it. Stetson Bennett couldn't do it, but they're still, uh, one of the best teams. Like again, I think it's Georgia, Ohio State. I could make the case that Alabama is still number three. Uh, I don't think you could argue Clemson. Uh, I think Tennessee and Michigan are pretty close. I would lean Tennessee over Michigan. I, I think you have to put Tennessee above Alabama, even though I think that was a perfect storm of what happened in that one moment that night. Bryce Young still did truly spectacular things in that game that I think are being overlooked. Uh, so I would lean oh, Georgia one, Ohio State two, but I ask me tomorrow and I I might switch. I, I there's some teams that can be dangerous though in a playoff situation, unlike we've seen in the past. So because things have been so bad at Texas A and M, I'm going to go back to 2020 when things were really good, and uh, <laughs> I feel like A and M should have been the third team to get in the playoff from the SEC. Um, you know, over Notre Dame, I, I feel like it should have happened with the year that they had. But now we're in a situation that we could see a three SEC teams in the playoffs, right? Like there, there is a world where that could still happen. It's, it's possible. I think there's two things working against that. One, the committee I think is going to do everything in its power to 
give championships again, whether that's right or wrong, give championships that be them be the tiebreaker, right? That's going to be the tiebreaker. I think Alabama could lose to LSU in two weeks. So I think Alabama might be out of this quicker than people think, but it's possible if Alabama runs the table, Georgia's 12 and 0 and they rematch like they did last year. Tennessee's 11 and 1. Tennessee has as good a resume as anybody else in college football at that point because they'd have a win over Bama, Kentucky, and LSU on the road and South Carolina on the road, which is turning into a better win and Pittsburgh on the road. Like they're going to have some good wins on the resume. So uh, the problem is 12 and 1 Oregon, undefeated Clemson, one loss Clemson. I don't think TCU is undefeated at the end of the year, but is there going to be a one loss Big 12 champ? Maybe. I think Michigan as a one loss team is is very deserving. Um, and the irony of there being potentially two Big Ten teams and two SEC teams in the same playoff, like after the year we've had where it's all just Big Ten SEC controlling everything, I think that would be in- extremely ironic. So I don't think it's going to happen. I think the committee would push everything in their power to, ma- to not make it happen. Uh, but if Tennessee is the third team, specifically Tennessee, if they are the third team and they are 11-1, and one, it's it's... That that resume is as salty as anybody else's. Um, so I I don't think it's going to happen. But man, it's fun to think about it. All right, here, listen to this hot sports take that I had a couple years or a couple weeks ago. I don't know if we're going to see Nick Saban win another national championship. And the reason I say that, again, things can change. But they didn't win last year. I don't think they're getting to the playoffs this year. And next year, who knows what happens with the transfer in, in portal? But Bryce Young's gone. All these guys are probably gone. They're going to start fresh again. I, Maybe they can figure it out, but it, put it this way. It's going to be at least three years between championships for Nick Saban. It feels that way right now. So you'll take a bet with me that Alabama does not win, not counting this year, because I'm, I'm with you. I'm not picking them to win the championship this year, even though that's what we all did at the beginning of the season. Clearly, they've got more weaknesses than, than we, we thought, some of the problems. But you're saying 23, 24, and 25, Alabama does not win a national championship in any of the next four seasons. I would take the other side of that bet. I would take Alabama to do it. Now, Nick, Nick Saban's the greatest coach of all time, so no, I wouldn't take that sure. bet. But hot sports take Jake right now. <laughs> At least the next couple of years, I don't see him winning. <laughs> I like who knows, you know, Bryce, you know, Tua showed up and was like made Jalen Hurts go to Oklahoma. So I like, you never know what's gonna happen. I wouldn't bet against Nick Saban. I do think what's interesting. And I know there were some fake Twitter accounts that got some folks on on social this this week. I do think that it could be as simple as Nick Saban waking up one day, and and I think people misled when I when I tweeted this that I think Nick Saban is just going to wake up one day, and and is all of a sudden going to be like I this is no longer in my players' best interest. This is no longer in my team's best interest. I am not operating at the same standard that I have set for myself. And as soon as that happens in his head, he's out. He could just walk away and just announce a retirement and it's just like a random Tuesday in June or something. Who knows? But I think that w- people are like, oh, that he's too he's too calculating for that. And I'm like, yeah, he's already done all the calculations. Like he's already prepared for that moment when it happens that he's just like, I can't, I am no longer as good as I used to be. I'm not living up to the standard that I set for myself. It is time for me to do what's best for my team and my players and to walk away. And I, I think that's going to happen just out of the blue. There's not going to be rumblings about it. There's not going to be stories. There's not going to be waffling. Oh, I'm going to go with hang out with Miss Terry on Lake Rainier and like contemplate the meaning of life. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's just going to wake up one morning and be like, that's it. I'm done. But he will have already done all the calculations. So I, I think that's a different topic than what you're saying. Cause I don't think as long as he's the head coach for the next five years, they're going to win another national championship. Like they're the, the, the obituary on the Alabama dynasty has been written dozens of times and dozens of times he's proved them all wrong. So I, 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 that is a hot take, though. I do appreciate that. Yeah, and I don't know if I fully believe it, but I don't think they're winning this year. <laughs> I don't think they're winning next year. And then who knows? Like Then that moment happens. Uh, but I would not take the bet. Yeah. Uh, it's like Belichick, right? Like I know they're right, like, right, terrible right. right now, but I'm not going to bet against the, the greatest NFL coach of all time. Let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you a question that's obvious, but how, how shocking is this A&M season? And I say that to you thinking... It's shocking to me, but if I really looked at it, we saw the writing on the wall last year against Colorado. We saw the writing against the wall against LSU and, and Ole Miss. Like This offense has been so bad for so long that it should be obvious, but here we are, kind of shocked at where A&M is. Yeah, the, the definition of insanity, right? Trying the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I think 
There, this is I find the whole entire Jimbo Fisher situation to be so fascinating for a number of reasons. Number one, I don't think the program is in like a bad place. Like no one thinks that that they are not like the the infrastructure that you need to run a major college football program at the highest levels is all right there. Like it's there's no there's no major flaw in the system or in the machinery that's causing this these problems from a from a foundational standpoint. Like not like where Tennessee was. Where like you got an, a guy running the athletic department who's not even qualified to be like you know even in the building, so it's not like they've got structural issues. That's 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 really interesting to me. The history of Fisher with the two seasons, and I would, to your point, two years ago when he got the best quarterback play and the best offensive line play that he's had since being at Texas A and M, they had the best season. Shockingly, uh, that there's that which is interesting. And then you go back to Winston and Jameis, and you go, what were his best seasons? At Florida State, well, it's clearly when he got the best quarterback play uh, with Jameis Winston for those two years. And everything before Jameis was kind of like, oh, they're underachieving. After Jameis, it was, oh, there's a little bit of chaos. Before Kellen Mond's final season, there was sort of underachieving. And now it feels like they're back to chaos again. So like, this is also kind of a track record here. At the end of all of that, I don't... I, I, <laughs> He's probably one offensive coordinator away from having a really, really, really good program. <laughs> like it's, uh, if if I I joke all the time, like he just needs to hang out with Aaron Rodgers, do some ayahuasca, and hang out in West Texas at some high school games in the off season to like reinvent the offense because it's not working. There's I don't there's nothing I'm going to say to you right now that people are going to hear that's new. Like it's you know the offense is too complicated, it's too slow, he needs to evolve. Blah blah. It's all the same stuff. But just take your hands off of it. Let your ego get out of the way and hire somebody who's modernized everything. I, and, and if you do that, I don't think they're that far away. Like that's, that's what makes the whole thing so interesting. Like three and four feels really far away from Tennessee right now, which has done it in two years, right? But it's not. That's a transfer quarterback and one big win over Bama and, and Tennessee's where they are now, right? Like it doesn't take, it doesn't take a whole lot to, to turn the program quickly. Um, but it, but it takes Jimbo doing the thing that Jimbo doesn't like to do, which is to pull himself out of it, less control, less hands-on, take the ego out of it. And that's a hard thing for football coaches to do across the country. Braden, I'm going to follow that up with this thought that is not original, but I, I've talked about it on this show many times. If A&M has the 60th ranked offense in the country, they have 119th. <laughs> if they have 60th, they maybe have one loss this year. You know, And, and that just shows you... All these games are the one, one or two possessions away. With as bad as that offense is, they're all winnable. Give me a little bit yeah. of offense, you're winning games. Yeah, and that, and that, and that's. I think that kind of that's a great point to sort of wrap up what I was just saying, which is I don't think they're far away. Like the the program as it, like to run a major college football program at the national championship level, you need like a million things, including millions of dollars, and you need infrastructure, you need alignment, you need leadership, you need chancellors and presidents and board of trustees and athletic directors that are all helping you pull in the right direction. You need recruiting. You need, you know, the ball to bounce your way. You need some penalties to go your way. Like you need everything to compete at that level. And it's sort of like the only thing they're missing is just the, the, the offensive schematic design, because again, 24 points is not 24 points is like a half of football in college football. And this team can't get over 24 points like at all against FBS opponents. You guys know the numbers. I don't have to tell you. So South Carolina, Alabama, that's two right there. You probably win with an offense. I'm not going to Mississippi State, eh, you know. Um, Arkansas, you probably got lucky to win that game. So App State, you win without question. So like you can, like you said, you can rattle off three wins right away that that this team has if they just have a competent offense. The other side of that real quickly is just let Connor take the ball for the last month. Like just see what you got. You, you've already you're at three and four. It's already a fa quote unquote failure of a season. Let's see if you can finish on a high note and find out what you got with the five star freshman. Let him play. The, let him play. Like you may not have a choice, but but let him play. Braden, great work, man. Let's do it again, brother. Anytime, man. Anytime.